Good morning. Welcome back everyone. Welcome back to the Finca on another gorgeous day. Yes, sunny southern Spain is a scorching hot today. It is. Um, again, it's been a bit like that. Um, before we crack on, and we are, we've got a lot to get through this one. Um, we've been asked a lot of questions about this. Remember, we, if you saw the other videos, this is a little outbuilding. It had a roof on it. Um, we cleaned it all out the other day. And a lot of people have been asking what, um, what it was for. We weren't sure, we knew it was something to do with the, the animals um, but Emilio popped by last night old Emilio, the old family that... Font of all knowledge Yes <laughs> <laughs> and um, it used to be a chicken coop basically yeah. the big olive beams here, there was another one across the front there there used to be a floor on there and then I don't know if you can make out in the walls there were perches um, across for the chickens to sleep or hens, chickens, call them what you will. Um, so that was on the top and on the bottom if you can see that there was a couple of slabs if you saw from the other video we had them in the courtyard, there were big slabs at an angle against the wall with a, a hole underneath that's where they kept the rabbits. Yep. So there we go. Um, also actually on the subject of history we did a video ages ago about how people used to live didn't we in the we 1870 to 1920 and um, a kind gentleman called David um, left in the comments about the, the woven... Yeah, the grass that we showed you I once when we went walking it. with the dogs. It ah, grows sorry, so David. high and it's so to tough. <laughs> um, and we, we mentioned it and we'd found lots of shoes and lots of baskets. and Escarte is it? Something like that. Something that sounds like about that. right. Apologies David if we've got it wrong. We'll learn it again. But yeah, we found <laughs> a lot of these artifacts, if you like, around the place when we were clearing out. Um, obviously made from this reed type grass. And David's wife Anne went on a little course and she's now weaving these yeah. things and they also suggested um, a channel to us of a, a Spanish historian type chap. Yeah. So we're gonna we're have gonna a look at that and see what we can pick out that's relevant to us and as we learn more about the place we'll share we'll that share with, it you, with too. you of course. So anyway enough waffle let's crack on. Let's do it. So what's becoming a bit of a habit, we're not creatures of routine particularly but this is now becoming me the first thing in the morning routine while it's cooler going with the pointing of the wall I've had to get the ladders out which is a great sign I've sprayed it down, I've vacuumed it, I've vacuumed it first and then I've sprayed it down and now it's time to get another bucket of mortar in the wall Excellent. We're up to the islet. Um, don't know if you can make it out. Um, brilliant. Another good job. Well done. Another bit further progress done. And now I can get on with something else. The next on the list. Remember this stuff we put on the roof? It was a bit thin. We are a bit disappointed with it. Well, we've got this now. Look at the difference. If you can see, this is kind of what we're expecting for this. Um, and this is actually cheaper per square metre than that stuff so we ordered it online we just thought that's what we'll be getting we assumed we did it was only 20 euros it's not worth taking it off and taking it back um, so I want to try and get this this will give us the double layer over the top of that and um, which will definitely give us a fantastic shade area I'm um, just not sure this is even also that's just held together with like um, I don't know nylon twine or something Whereas well, this is proper wire, twisted wire together. Um, so, who knows, you can fathom that. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going to try and find out how I can get it on the roof. I need to try and find the end first, actually, to get it unrolled. And then see if we can get it on the roof and see how I can fasten it down. Hopefully, I've got it undone. Um, it should just staple on the same. Um, I'll throw it up there, try and lay it out, try and roll it out. and. Um, I figure it out. Yeah. 
must like all that door as well. <laughs> Fab. Right, um, might need to cut out for around the flue first. So I've had to deploy the big ladder to get to this side in a precarious position. Um, I've got my side cutter that should be able to snip it with that, he says. I should actually be able to staple it, I think. What I'm going to do, I'm going to roll it out that way to the end, um, fix it along as I go, and then attempt to roll it back the other way to give us a double layer. Let's see if we can do it. Uh, you get a staple in there anyway. job is to clean off this beam so that we can get it oiled, um, lime wash this bit of the ceiling and this wall um, in order to get the fridge back where it belongs because um, it's going to be very difficult to do it when the fridge is in position. So I'm on with this, I've got my apple fuerte, I've got my little scraper and I've got a cloth. So get the thickest off first of all with the scraper, it works quite well and then any stubborn bits Spray it with a bit of apple fuerte and with a bit of look, it should come off easily. And I'll just get you some safety glasses for when yes, the apple fuerte comes out. Yes, please. Well, so far, so good. Um, it looks fab actually. Uh, really, really does the job. Really, really cut out of the sun, even though you can see bits of light through, it doesn't let any sun through at all. Um, but the staples aren't hacking it, it's far too thick. Um, I think I need to make perhaps a couple of strips of wood to go on each side to screw down from the top. Um, you can tell I'm absolutely dripping, it's that hot. Um, so I'm going to have a quick ponder on that, have a drink, have a sit in the shade and um, yeah, see what I can come up with, see what I've got. Right, so what I'm going to do, I've got this length here should be the exact length that I need. That's good, isn't it? I like it when I plug those together. I'm going to rip this down, two rounded strips off each side, leave me a spare bit for the middle, which I can use in the future. And I'm just going to drop it on top, clamp it in place, and screw it through um, the whole lot on both sides. So, to the saw. Right, so we've got our two bits. I'm going to stick them on top here, get it all sorted out, and uh, clamp them in place. It's perfect, that. Lovely. If the clamps are long enough. Which, they're not. Right, I'll just have to hold it and screw it and stick some screws in it. Couple more in. Excellent. Now the other side. Well, there we go. It's done. What a fabulous barbecue area. Well, it will be when I, when I put my tools away, move the ladders. You can see the shade it's providing there now. It's almost 100% um, blocked out. Really, really nice. We're very happy cooking under here. All we've got to do, it's not quite finished, is just put the bottom shelves on that, 
but that'll wait because we're going to order a lot more wood for the roofs and stuff so there's no point just getting one piece to finish that um so yeah that is happy days right Sharon's done a cracking job on that um that's ready for oiling we're only constant we've got them all to do all the beams need cleaning off and that but we're only concentrating on this as we probably said before so we can get the fridge freezer back in here so the next job um, is to get this area probably up to here lime washed and between the beams and then when that's done we can get this self leveling down on here um, I think what I'm going to do I'm going to make some strips and um, foam them in place um, because this self apparently well Chris from Tales from the cave side and um, we went and bought this together ages ago if you saw that one and um, apparently it doesn't very self level you've got to kind of work it a bit so I'm going to put myself two strips of wood in um, as a guide so I can level it up and fill it that way it actually slopes back slightly um, so the first thing that we need to do is get this oil and lime washing done and I'm going to let Sharon do that because she's got a much steadier hand than I have on things like that so lime wash we're in the messy side of the workshop these are two lime vats, one here, one there. All we need to make it, we have done a video on this a bit ago, but you take one bite of um, hydrated lime, pour it in your bucket, top it off with water. But in fact, I think it might even be two bags that fit in there. Um, and then cover it, just leave it for three months, and show them that it stays covered after that time. Well, this is what you get, I'll show you what you get one very dusty lime vat and there it is that's just that little scoop to get it out with and all you do is um, scoop it out with some of the water mix it up until it's a, a paint like consistency and slap it on your walls so let's get that done we don't need a lot but it's hard to judge how much you do need so scoop out our lime A bit of water. Should do it. And then give it a whisk. Probably a bit excessive for a small pot. There we go. Okay, so I'm on it. Um, I don't think it's going to need wetting down because it's quite a thin mix. Um, the wall might, that's a bit more porous. Um, but the ceiling is different stuff, I don't know what they've used. Um, but I'll see how it goes and uh, if it does, it does. I'll crack on. There we have it done. Um, it looks very patchy, it always does. Um, the edges particularly are not taking the lime wash very well at all. Um, the wall's taking it much better, I thought it would. So we'll just have to wait now till tomorrow, see what it dries like, might need a second coat. In the morning, look, it's drying a bit patchy. Um, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We, we don't actually know what this substrate is. Um, so, but another coat um, should sort that out really well, um, but that'll be in a bit because it's still cool outside and I'm going to do another mix and get on with my wall, which has however dried out um, fantastically. Um, I'm going to try and get to the top today and start working along the top. Um, I want to get that wall plate in as soon as I can to get the beams on for the roof. The rest we can do, we can get this up a bit, give us a bit more shade and um, make it a bit easier, a bit more pleasant. So, on we go, I'm going to get a mix going on. 
well I did it, I made it to the top, um, excellent. Um, we have one piece complete, it's a, probably a metre wide, another uh, 20 to go. Um, we'll just keep podding on though, now it's far too hot to be out in the sun especially, so I'm going to a cooler place. You can't really see a lot in this corner, um, but what I'm going to do, I've got a few sets of OSB I've just ripped down, I'm going to make and level myself a form um, for this bit of floor. Um, essentially I'm going to pack them all up so they're level in all directions and then foam them in place with the old square yeah, expanding foam. Then I'll have two solid good sides that are level that I can pull across to get myself level and that apparently doesn't self-level very well um, in the right place. So I'll have a mess about with these and we'll basically we're going to end up with a box um, to fill in essentially, hopefully. So I'll have a mess about and um, see what we can come up with. So there it is, it's pretty crude but it should do the trick. Um, what I've got is two level sides there, I can put a, a board across and drag the concrete level. I still need to put a front on it yet. Um, we don't know if we're going to do this lime washing first. Um, on the wall up there before we do this but we can decide Shannon's just popped out but when she gets back um, yeah we'll decide what we're going to do so we decided to do the lime wash first it obviously needs another coat a bit disappointing really because sometimes it dries a bit it, it looks patchy when we've done it it's wet and then it dries all nice and even but it wasn't to be yesterday so we'll um give it another coat and um, hopefully that'll be it. I won't have to do it a third time. Got my little brush today because it was difficult cutting. I'd cleaned all the beams off beautifully and then it was difficult cutting in the edges and got on the beams again which I did wipe off but uh, it tends to soak in immediately so I'll have to do those again but hey ho! It is what it is so we'll, we'll crack on and give it another coat and see what it looks like. Well that's it, second coat, um, said before bear in mind it's not like paint, you have no idea what's going to dry like, it looks very patchy, um, but I've literally just very very thin, um, they're just the bits that were patchy, because this bit and this bit, I don't know whether you can tell on camera, took really well yesterday, um, I, just, I just don't know what they've made, used to do these walls and the ceiling, um, because upstairs the line wash worked brilliantly. Um, but the walls were a lot rougher, so these have obviously been plastered or something maybe. Um, but we'll see, that's all we can do, wait and see, and if it's not good, we'll do it again. In anticipation that that's going to be good, I'm going to stick this front piece in here, ready for me, self-leveling. If it's not good, we'll have to wait until the self-leveling goes off before we can put another layer on it. Um, we'll get there. We're experimenting with different thicknesses, different consistencies different mixes, um, every wall's different when it's all made of stuff like this. Right, get this stuck in. Right, it's in, I've just foamed along the back, that's just to stop the self-leveling from leaking out everywhere. Um, we can't really do a lot more now until things are dry, so it's time for a nice cold beer. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Not a cloud in the sky, you can see just up there, position it just so you can see. Um, and I'm on my morning chore of um, carrying on with this pointing. Um, we get a lot of questions about pointing, we don't generally go into too much detail about it, but we've had a lot of questions about mixes and lime washes and you know, general pointing things, rebuilding things, but as far as we've had Bulgaria, South Africa. So, um, we'll address that a little bit to hopefully answer people's questions. Um, we're using a, a sand and lime mix here. We don't exactly know what was used originally on these walls, um, but 
it's, uh, we know we do know that they're built in they've got big stones going all the way through in places like these massive ones here that'll go right through and then smaller stones built up and they were filled with just earth and stuff in the center and then they were pointed up on the outside because what happens in old of old if they get too wedded the walls open like that so obviously that's what we don't want to happen that's why we're fixing them um, we apply it by hand for two reasons um, a because a lot of the stones are round and to use a pointing thing on them um, it's very difficult to get the, the effect and if you can see this this is some of the original pointing um, I'll bring the camera in a bit yeah this is some of the original wall that's probably been sheltered and not washed away and you can see how it's done and like here you can clearly see finger finger marks in it over here as well there if you can make those out they are clearly finger marks which says to me that this was done by hand originally um, same again there in that corner over there all over bits of the house you can see finger marks where it's been pulled on with the fingers probably with a glove or some sort hopefully um, so that's another reason why we do it by hand we're trying to do it as authentic as possible um, we'll go more into that in a little bit but in the meantime um, I'll show you what we're using how we do it so for pointing we have this little measure we made ourselves as you can tell just a plastic 5 litre tub with the top cut off and it's calibrated approximately um, for measures so we're using 4 to 1 mix for pointing on the outside so we'll fill this just about to the top tip that in the bucket with sand that is and then add lime up to about that mark there gives it a pretty consistent mix and a pretty consistent colour um, so what sand do we use? so this is the sand, my measure is full I'm going to chuck that in my bucket we take a handful as you can see, can you see that? it's quite a coarse well it's a very well graded, it's got very very fine grains which are important um, in your mix but thicker grains as well and um, it gives a nice texture and a good strong finish I hope we can make that out so we're in the messy part of the workshop this is the lime, just comes bagged um, wear a mask when you're working with this stuff, it's horrible then we just fill this up then, up to our bottom mark it's hydrated lime um, we prefer that to hydraulic lime because it goes off as we want it to, not as it's predetermined to go off and the hardness is always perfect for the stones that we're working with as opposed to hydraulic lines which have various hardnesses it's all a bit black magic really right so there we go, there's our lime that then goes in our bucket our pot and we give it a good mix dry you can see how dry that is <laughs> Then we start to add the water, a bit at a time. Use a sprinkler on the watering can because the wasp likes to land in it and I end up with a mimi mix. So you want to keep adding water very very slowly and keep well mixing it you reckon you should mix it for about 20 minutes I usually do a bit less than that because I'm impatient um, but you can see it there it looks quite dry but when you squeeze it you can see how the moisture if you can make that out there the moisture should come to the surface and it all sticks together nice and stickily that's ready to go so let's go I should have done this first but 
don't worry about your mix too much um, because it's hydrated lime if it starts to dry up you can just add more water to it unlike cement or hydraulic lime so give it a good vacuum out you want to get all the loose stuff out of there even if you've got to use a little chisel or a brush or whatever get it all out you want to ideally get back to solid mortar in our case we're that far in we're back to the dirt in filling the walls in a lot of places then you need to give it a good wet down not massively soak it but all the joints dampen them all off with your sprayer um, to give a good key to give a good adhesion Then you're ready to start pointing, just literally just shove it in the joints. If you get bigger holes, which you will come across, or you may do, um, go armed with a, um, a load of different size pebbles and bits to push in. They're called pinnings, and um, these use less mortar, obviously, but these actually put strength in. And um, We usually tap them in with a hammer, because you ideally want these touching the other stones around. Um, to put more strength in the wall so I'm going to wet these down now as well and then get on with the pointing so literally just start shoving it in and again we've got a reasonable size hole there so we'll have A pinning in there. Get me hammer out. So knee the up around and carry on. That bucket I've got here will do about a square meter. So that's like five five liters of sand mixed with the lime. You get about a square meter out of that, depending on how deep your joints are. If they're thinner it'll go a lot further. Right, so I'll carry on. Well, there we go. Um, about half a square metre out of that bucket. Some of them are quite deep. Um, but we're getting there. It's going to take a while. We've got time. Um, plus it's far too hot now to be up there in the sun, in the full on sun, carrying on. So, back inside. While we're on the subject of uh, traditional building techniques, we've got a lot of comments off of you guys. Thank you so much. We also get a lot of suggestions, a lot of input as to ways to do things. Um, we're actually trying to keep the whole build as close to original as possible. Yeah. It was always our plan to um, keep as many of the original features as possible and to use as many of the existing materials. You know, we've made the gate out of re uh, reclaimed wood, for example. But obviously we don't have enough, do we? So any yeah. new materials we're using, we're trying to keep them in line with what would have been used originally, as close as possible to what would have been used originally. Obviously we need some modern conveniences. Yes, I mean we needed a bathroom, we needed hot and cold running water in the kitchen, we needed a, a sewage system and of course electricity, um, where it was not been possible to use um, traditional building materials like expanding foam if you've watched many of our videos you'll see Andy's right, a stuff. big fan of it um, but it's it's never seen we've used it to stick pieces of wood to the walls um, yes and rather than using but it's mud not seen. for insulation yeah. or horse hair or whatever we'd use that it's, but you can't see it you anyway. can't see it it's like the barbecue area yes would they have had a barbecue area in 1870 no we couldn't <laughs> find any any remnants of one but this this roofing um, the existing build, the main house, the roof is, has exactly the same bamboo, canyas they call them, between um, the ceiling and the roof tiles. So that is in keeping, completely in keeping. Yes, they'd, they'd have just plastered this top and bottom yeah. and then put the roof or whatever on top or a floor even. And the same with the joists, they're pretty much exactly the same as the roof joists and it's all pine. Yes. Um, 
our ne ne nearest town is called Pinoso, which in Valenciano is El Pinos, which means the pines. pines. The area is covered in pines. Oh, so why why yeah. use any other material? So the end product that we see um, is we're trying to get it as close to original as possible and blending new things. Yes. Um, using old. original as close to original materials and techniques as possible yeah, yeah. so there we go I hope and that answers a lot of your questions yes let's go and look at our line wash inside and I'm very pleased to say this morning that is spot on it's dried beautifully if it looks a bit patchy on camera it's because it's a bit patinaed the uh, surface is not even smooth um, but all those patchy bits have disappeared so that's happy days we can get the fridge back into place when of course Andy's done the concreting and I've got to oil those beams as well but yeah very very pleased so next on our list is the um, pad for the fridge feeder to sit on again not traditional nor is the washing machine but we had it propped up um, on this stone slab at the back here on a piece of wood um, it's not ideal is it because they need to be super level so I'm going to get this pad down and then as Sharon said we can get the, the beams finished off and get him back where he belongs. So I'm in the makeshift temporary downstairs kitchen. Um, this is the stuff we're going to use. It's auto, level, auto leveling screed. Um, it says add 4.5 litres of water per sack and mix it, let it stand for two minutes. Apply the mixed product by pouring or pumping over the area to 10 to 60 millimetres thick where we're, we're on 15 to 30, so it's within our spec. And go over it with um, a toothed roller. I've got one of those somewhere to get the air bubbles out and then trowel it flat. Um, so let's get it mixed. Right, so I've got everything ready. Um, that's 4.5 litres of water in there. I'm going to add this to it, a little by little I guess is the way to go, if I can get in it. We don't mind making a mess on this floor, it's all going to come up apart from the original stones there. <laughs> you can see them. Uh, right then, that's how we go, a bit at a time. Not easy. <clears throat> it's mixed. No lumps, I said. Let it stand for two minutes. Um, give it another swish then and stick it in our hole. So here it is, let's see what happens, <laughs> pour it in, don't know how much we're going to need, probably all of it actually. going to be a pretty, pretty perfect measure. Right, let's have a look and trial it out now. Trial it flat. It's very difficult to see in here, but I've just put a piece of wood across both sides and dragged it all the way across to the back. That should now be dead level. Well, the floor's drying all right. Um, we might need Chris if you're there, if you're watching Chris. Um, <laughs> one day next week to help us get the fridge back in. We've still got to do the, the beams, cleaning oil the yeah. beams just around the fridge pit. Yeah, that won't take um, long. No, no. It won't take long. No. And um, then, yeah, so sadly we've come to the end of another video. I hope you enjoyed it. Yes, thank you for watching as always. And if you've got to this point, really big thanks. <laughs> yes, and consider subscribing if you've made yes, it this far. Yes, <laughs> and click on that like button. <laughs> and, um, so yeah, we'll be back for more of the same on, on Thursday. Thursday.